Hello students, so in the previous class uh, I uh, defined Lyapunov function and I also gave uh, two theorems, I proved one of them uh, which basically tells you that uh, if uh, you have origin as the stationary, stable stationary point then there always exists a uh, uh, Lyapunov function and uh, if it is um, uh, simply asymptotically stable then we have a strong Lyapunov function, existence of strong Lyapunov function and what do we mean by Lyapunov and strong Lyapunov function that we have also defined in the previous class. Alright, um, just a small uh, a little theorem that uh, I would like to start with and then I will give you the example. So, another theorem, uh, theorem 3 basically. So, theorem 3. Um, so, let V x uh, be a strong Lyapunov, strong Lyapunov uh, function for the uh, equation, the autonomous equation 1 that I defined in the previous class. Uh, which is basically of the uh, autonomous system 1 and this is nothing but our x dot equals to f of x in case if uh, you need a reference. So, x dot equals to f of x um, on a neighborhood d on a neighborhood d of the origin and let uh, v minimum v minimum be defined as in the theorem 1 that means in the previous theorem and uh, the subset the subset d 0 of d uh, by all such d 0 such that x x belonging to d and uh, v x is less than v minimum let us call this as equation number 2 then this d 0 is the domain of attraction of the origin. So, let V be a strong Lyapunov function uh, for equation number 1 on the neighborhood D of the origin and let V minimum be defined as in the previous theorem uh, 1 and uh, the subset d0 of d is defined by all such x in d such that this uh, vx is less than v minimum. Then this uh, d0 is the domain of attraction of the origin and uh, basically uh, here we can say that uh, the proof the proof is uh, similar to the theorem 1 and 2 that we have just proved. Uh, the difference here basically um, we take the spherical neighborhoods around the origin with I mean here in the present theorem we do not have the uh, we do not have to find the spherical neighborhood around the origin and uh, any solution starting in d0 um, of course cannot leave d and uh, following the similar arguments of uh, theorem 1 and theorem 2 we can see that uh, any solution that is starting in d0 um, will converge uh, to origin as t tends to infinity and therefore, this d0 will become the domain of attraction uh, of the origin. So, that is the idea that we will follow here and uh, second, uh, so there are one or two uh, uh, remarks that I would like to make. So, here first remark would be based on these uh, theorem number 1, 2 and 3 that the shape uh, the shape of d0 depends on uh, depends on of course depends of course uh, on the lyapunov function the lyapunov function 
and uh, because v x is less than v minimum. So, how you define d 0 that actually depends on the type of Lyapunov function that we are considering and um, different, different Lyapunov. So, basically it tells us that different Lyapunov function will give you different types of uh, domain of attraction that is this uh, d 0. So, basically domain of attraction means uh, you are starting with any solution uh, in d 0 and as t tends to infinity the solution will always remain in d 0 right. So, that d 0 the construction of d 0 is done uh, with the help of this uh, Lyapunov function. And since Lyapunov function is not unique, if you are coming up with different Lyapunov functions, so then your d0 will also continuously um, change. So, um, this is obvious. And um, second remark is, um, in trying to construct Lyapunov function, in trying uh, to construct to construct Lyapunov functions, one usually starts with a positive definite uh, test function. one usually starts with a positive definite test function containing some parameter containing some parameters and tries to adjust the parameter value adjust the parameter values such that the total derivative d of v x d of v x becomes becomes negative or negative semi definite right. So, a first choice of v. So, a first choice might be v is equals to x transpose a into x where a is a positive definite matrix where a is a positive definite matrix. So, for, so, first of all construction of this d 0 uh, which uh, is the domain of attraction that is not unique because it is dependent on the Lyapunov function and second one is in uh, in an effort to construct this Lyapunov function we usually start with a positive definite function uh, containing some parameters and then we adjust the value of those parameters. So, uh, you write you wrote down a function suppose if you have a one uh, one dimensional equation that means a scalar equation. So, from there when you are constructing the Lyapunov function you write the parameters uh, basically uh, and you construct the function and then from there we do the reverse uh, calculation to come up with uh, the correct uh, values of these parameters. So, that you actually get this uh, d of v x that means, uh, the derivative total derivative what we are calling here becomes uh, negative definite or uh, negative semi definite. So, because it has to satisfy the definition of Lyapunov function. So, if it satisfies the like, definition of Lyapunov function, it has to satisfy those um, uh, criteria, whatever is involved in there. Okay. So, let us take one example. Um, example 1. So, consider a scalar equation. Although we are defining all the or proving all the results uh, for a vector equation, we kind of limiting ourselves uh, to examples that are um, scalar equations or system of two equations and all. But uh, that does not mean it cannot be generalized to a system of uh, n equations. Uh, it is just that for understanding point of view, we are limiting ourselves to um, uh, how to say uh, uh, 
smaller examples all right. So, consider a, a scalar equation that is uh, x dot equals to minus of x cube right. Of course, it is a nonlinear system and we have to test the stability. Um, here uh, our f basically uh, our f of x is x cube and the stationary point is nothing but so stationary point stationary point is 0 x equals to 0 or origin or whatever you want to say. Now, if we if we do the linearization um, uh, basically um, around this point origin. So, then it will give us a vanishing Jacobian and if you remember the uh, topic that we covered maybe two or three classes ago. So, there we said if the Jacobian becomes uh, vanishing, if the Jacobian vanishes then we cannot be able to draw the conclusion related to stability. So, here if you do the linearization around the point x equals to 0 then the Jacobian vanishes basically and therefore, those tests the linearization method simply do not work. So, you can write um, linearization linearization yields um, a vanishing Jacobian, a vanishing Jacobian matrix for x equals to 0. So, basically a strong Lyapunov function a strong Lyapunov function is v of x is equals to for example, we can write for instance v x equals to sin square x right. So, this is um, uh, a strong Lyapunov function. So, this function is positive definite this function is positive definite uh, if mod of x is less than pi that is minus of pi less than x less than pi. So, whether v uh, v x is positive or not v x is always positive because you have sin square x v at 0 is 0 and when you are taking the derivative then it becomes to sin x cos x and uh, within that range uh, v x is positive. So, basically um, we are getting a positive um, uh, definite uh, function right and uh, the corresponding orbital and the corresponding derivative the corresponding 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 Uh, corresponding total derivative, total derivative which is uh, d of v of x is equals to uh, uh, dv dx. So, this will be 2 sin x uh, cos x and then uh, I will have a dx dt. So, dx dt is minus of x cube right. So, this is minus of x cube. So, minus of x cube sin 2 x. So, from here we can see that uh, is negative. So, uh, the corresponding total derivative this is negative definite if mod x is less than pi by 2. So, here um, uh, this v uh, yields the interval this. So, here v is giving the interval interval uh, minus pi to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, basically v is giving the interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 as the domain of attraction as the because this d 0 the domain of attraction actually depends on the Lyapunov function v. So, here we have the domain of attraction 
as minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Of course, uh, if we talk about the uh, positive definite uh, definiteness of the matrix of the Lapuna function v, then it is on the interval minus pi to pi. But uh, as long as uh, we want to know the domain of attraction, so then we are taking the subset of minus pi to pi domain of attraction. Uh, so, basically uh, we find uh, that uh, the domain of attraction is uh, minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So, if we start, um, so the stationary point of course lies in between and if we start uh, with any arbitrary solution um, within that uh, origin or within that uh, uh, around that point uh, x equals to 0. So, then in as uh, t tends to infinity the solution will always remain within that uh, interval. So, between minus pi to pi by uh, pi minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Um, this uh, Lapunov function is uh, not unique. So, this is uh, 1 v that we have constructed. You can also construct 1 v 1 let us say and uh, v 1 will be x square and this is actually a strong Lapunov function. So, this is a strong Lyapunov function. So, earlier it was just a Lyapunov function. In this case, it is strong Lyapunov function because here we can see that um, around the origin, uh, uh, origin is the stationary point fine. If we do the linearization, then again the Jacobian will vanish that is also good. Now, um, basically a strong Lyapunov function um, uh, can be uh, here uh, basically a uh, strong Lyapunov function. Uh, can be given by v 1 x equals to x square as uh, if we do the derivative. If we do the derivative, then here we will get d of v 1 of x equals to minus of 2 x to the power 4, which is less than 0 for all x not equals to 0. And therefore, the origin is asymptotically stable and if the, uh, I mean here uh, our x equals to 0 is actually um, um, is asymptotically stable and here basically our domain of attraction uh, this d 0 can be given by whole real line right. So, as uh, t tends to infinity the solution will always remain uh, in the whole r and uh, therefore, here we can say that the basin of attraction appears to be the whole real line. So, along the whole real line uh, we have our d 0 ok. So, um, as you can see, uh, we can for simple examples it is ok or it is easy to construct the Lapunov function which we are uh, which we have also done. We I mean for this simple problem x dot equals to minus of x cube, we can find out uh, these uh, strong uh, Lyapunov function which is either given by sin square x, x square, maybe you come up with some other function right. So, construction of this Lyapunov function. Um, is also very important and it comes uh, from the practice that what kind of Lapunov function you need to consider. And from there we have uh, the properties uh, which uh, actually tells you that um, whether uh, it is a uh, stable, I mean whether the solution is uh, this uh, origin is actually a st uh, stable stationary point. If it is stable stationary point, then what kind of uh, I mean uh, property this Lapunov function will have. Right. So, uh, with this example, we can see that. Okay. Now, um, let me just uh, quickly glance my notes if we need to uh, cover some more topics in this. So, um, okay. Now, we slowly move, uh, we slowly move to our third uh, or maybe uh, fourth chapter. So, something called a chaotic system, right. So, chaotic system is not, I mean, uh, basically as the uh, name suggests, I mean, the, there is a chaos, but uh, it is of different type, right. So, chaos in the sense that as uh, t tends to infinity, what happens to the solution? So, if let us say if you have a nonlinear ordinary differential equation or you have a system of ordinary differential equation and as t tends to infinity, the solution may behave um, differently. So, that means there is a unpredictable behavior within the solution and uh, that uh, unpredictability actually leads to something called uh, 
chaos uh, in the system of equations or chaotic system. So, in this chapter basically we deal with the system uh, which have the bounded solution for t tends to infinity, but do not converge to stationary uh, or um, quasi periodic solution. So, basically we will um, first uh, start with uh, uh, let us say one or two examples and then we slowly move uh, towards uh, some definitions what do we mean by local convergence and all and uh, from there we will see uh, how we can uh, uh, motivate the concept of this uh, chaotic systems. The thing is uh, uh, this chaos, chaos or chaotic system it is a very lengthy topic it is actually I mean it will constitute a several course in itself. But uh, here I will try to summarize the whole thing in uh, uh, I have to say uh, in, in this um, uh, 2 to 2 uh, and a half hours of lecture. So, of course, I will skip many topics, but this chaos theory or chaotic system I mean it it is a very important topic in dynamical system and uh, in fact, it can uh, constitute a, a separate course in itself all right. So, here I will just touch a very small portion of it I will give you some definitions, some examples, just a feel of it and then we will move on to the next topic all right. So, let us consider um, one example ok chaotic system. So, chaotic chaotic system. So, consider uh, a one dimensional equation. So, suppose we have a system of equation uh, x dot equals to f of uh, x and uh, we did some uh, some discretization. So, numerically. So, if you follow the Euler's uh, forward difference method or um, any numerical scheme. So, basically we can write um, x i. So, let us write uh, the, um, the, the tent map in a way. So, the tent map the tent map is given by x i plus 1 equals to f of x i which is equals to 2 mu. Uh, so, when 2 mu times x i when 0 less than or equal to x i less than or equal to half and 1 minus x i if 1 by 2 uh, you can write here if you need it and 1 by 2 less than or equal to x i less than or equal to 1. So, between 0 to 1 we are looking at. So, the iteration function f x um, if we plot uh, for mu is equals to 1 uh, then it is given by uh, basically so the solution. Uh, so, if we plot this uh, iteration function x i uh, then it will be something like a tent. So, something of this type uh, a tent map right. So, this is for mu is equals to 1 and uh, for mu less than or equal to half uh, 0 less than or equal to uh, mu less than or equal to half the tent map has. Uh, so, let me write uh, the iteration function the iteration function f x is plotted is plotted um, in the figure let us. So, this is 0 to 1 and then we have uh, 0 to 1 this is our figure 1 in figure 1 all right uh, for mu equals to 1. So, for 0 less than or equal to mu less than or equal to half the tent map has one att uh, attracting the tent map has one attracting uh, stationary point 
the origin right so basically when our mu is between uh, 0 and half then this map then this tent map has uh, one attracting um, stationary point which is the origin and uh, for mu is equals to for mu is equals to half the interval the interval 0 to 1 is mapped on 0 to half right and all the points in the later interval are stationary and uh, and all the points and all the points uh, in the latter interval are stationary okay and for and for mu is greater than half a secondary point a secondary point x star uh, is found is found which is given by x star equals to 2 mu by 1 plus 2 mu. So, both stationary uh, points are unstable here since uh, d of dx. So, here both the stationary points stationary points are unstable unstable since df mod of df dx is greater than 1 as these points uh, at these points right. So, we have uh, if mu is uh, less than half but greater than 0 then the tent map has one uh, attracting stationary points attracting. So, there was attracting stationary points which is the origin. Now, for mu is equals to 1 the interval 0 to 1 is uh, mapped on uh, 0 to half and all the points in the latter interval are stationary. So, between 0 to half we have all the stationary points. For mu greater than half, uh, the secondary point x star is found, uh, which is uh, given by x star equals to 2 mu by 1 plus uh, uh, 2 mu. Now, both the stationary points, uh, that is uh, for the case mu is equals to uh, 1 and uh, um, mu is equals to, uh, for mu is equals to half, not 1, for mu is equals to half and for 0 less than or equal to mu less than or equal to half. Uh, both the stationary points are unstable because uh, mod of d of dx is greater than 1 and uh, the iteration the iterates of the tent map um, are given as the function of mu and uh, the initial value of the iteration is chosen arbitrary and the first 200 iterates have been discarded and uh, then basically um, we can try to plot and uh, we will see that uh, the orbits uh, basically if we try to plot uh, this um, um, uh, this uh, x i s then basically we will get uh, the orbits uh, con so they converge uh, to the subset of 0 and uh, 0 to 1 which contains infinitely many points right. So, here um, basically um, as uh, t tends to infinity we have the convergence of this system uh, to many points within the interval 0 to half and uh, this uh, basically shows uh, this chaotic behavior of this uh, particular system. So, we have the autonomous system x dot equals to f of x which we have written in terms of an iterative scheme. Now, for different values of mu we are getting the stationary points and as uh, t tends to infinity these x i's um, basically uh, these x i's um, uh, the they will uh, uh, constitutes our orbits and the orbits they converge to the subset of 0 to 1 which uh, actually contains infinitely many points. So, basically it is giving us uh, a kind of uh, chaotic behavior and uh, that chaotic behavior leads to um, uh, the 
criteria that uh, when we are saying t tends to infinity, so the solution that is uh, the, the boundary solution whether um, we can obtain um, to some stationary or quasi stationary periodic solutions or not. So, that is the condition or the, uh, the property that we want to test of this uh, system. Um, we have a few, uh, few more uh, uh, examples, but I think they are all analogous. I just want to define the local divergence. That means, when we are doing t tends to um, infinity, how this uh, convergence and divergence definition actually translates. So, basically local divergence, local divergence, ok. So, the example, the previous example, the previous example shows that, shows that uh, small changes small changes in the initial conditions conditions of the ODE may give rise may give rise to dramatic changes in the solution. in the solutions and uh, basically um, this uh, small changes in the uh, dr dramatic changes in the uh, in the solution actually tells us that if you play with the initial condition a little bit then the stability of the solution I mean as t tends to infinity whether the solution will uh, uh, will tend to 0 or uh, will simply I mean it, if, it, if it goes to infinity nothing can be said because uh, uh, playing with the initial condition even a little bit actually disturbs the stability of the solution, right. So, um, in order to motivate uh, what do, I mean how or under which conditions such kind of uh, system. So, suppose you have a system where you are uh, sort of uh, disturbing the initial condition a little bit and then the solution shows you erratic behavior or dramatic changes are ob observed in the solution. So, those are systems uh, are exhibiting a kind of uh, chaotic behavior and we want to study those systems. So, before we can actually talk about uh, this uh, stability and uh, the convergence, we define the local divergence, right. And for local divergence, we have a formal definition. So, actually I am um, I am running out of time in this lecture. So, I will um, start with again the local divergence in the next class and we will uh, start with because uh, it will be a fresh topic. So, let us start with the fresh definition in the next class and I uh, will give you one or two more examples of uh, chaotic system from dynamical system uh, point of view and uh, we try to understand how this uh, chaotic theory can be visualized in case of ODs. So, in the next class we will start with one example and uh, then we will come back to the local divergence uh, definition, alright. So, I will stop here today and uh, I will see you in the next class.